Yabo, Linja Nilonke, Magadi may say, Welcome everyone. This is a reality stabilizing program by prestigious Rabbi L.M. Dumizulu of Hamiti Hebrew Ethics Marifado Hem, revealing our story and the hidden power in our greatness, the real history of our ancestors. Welcome to our journey into the world of our origins. Now is our ancestors' time. Ontology, part of philosophy, the three areas of philosophy directly influencing teaching, theory, as well as practice. We are going to look at epistemology. How do we know? Knowing through experience, reason, authority, intuition, and active construction. What we are going to do today is to use a comparative approach and our contrast is on Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. For obvious reasons, because these are the major religions now dominating the thinking of our nation. But what we are going to do, we want to put a primer here, which is very critical. We say a history of major religions timeline here, which we are showing, shows that our ancestral belief system or worldview is the oldest of Hinduism, Judaism, Shinto, Taoism, Buddhism, and the AD religions like Christianity and Islam. So we are saying the onus is on these all religions to disprove our ancestral belief system, which we are going to show in this uh, video. We also should uh, be able to look at Abrahamic religions like Judaism with 18 million. Uh, believers, Christianity with 2 billion, and Islam with 1.3 billion, Aryans, uh, Hinduism 900 million, and Buddhism 360 uh, million. And we are saying all these came from ancient African spirituality. That's the comparative, and we are going to do that in a way and in a manner that is functional, and that compares three pillars. Of, of our ancestors time now is our ancestors time before that so let's continue and let's proceed now and let us take this uh, step uh, by step Ignatons monotheism why did the Africans the indigenous Egyptians smell a red regarding his particular brand of monotheism why were they forced to flee the upheaval the hikes was brought into the region why do they still dimly remember that they once cried over Hem Rogo, Kohelela Hama Lemo Gogoro, Hami being the ancient name of Hamit, also known as Hamet by others, the concept of real monotheism, the worship of Nebuhiwi, the real and eternal Neparuri in modern Tswana terms and Guni language of Botswana, so called Botswana or Southern Africa, was not a strange one to ancient Hamites. It was entrenched long before the Hyksos period, but was not as clearly as what Akhenaton wanted to establish. What they did not want was the forced worship of an elite group of flesh and blood gods, the so-called pantheon, Latin for earth gods, who now masqueraded as the almighty Yehofa, Twana, who is who here on the earth. You go to this Meneg uh, newspaper, which we are giving here and study all this but Akhenaton also reverence uh, the sun and wanted to destroy everything except uh, the sun the basic uh, revealed levels of consciousness or spirituality among us, the original peoples on earth is as follows animism which is the intermediaries and totemic and then we have uh, polytheism and then it is animism, where it is totemic. It's one example of animists. That's why you find ancient Egyptian gods have got a dual 
representation of the human being body and the head of an animal is totemic is animism we shall deal with this and clarify what it means and then there is the monotheism that is very abstract concept of the oneness of the creator it's very abstract when you explain this you have to correctly say there is a chasm and the human mind cannot absorb and understand the real high creator and then you've got a polytheism which are the divinities or the natures and the reduction to in terms of understanding of these animist or animism are uh, forces let's proceed now because what we want to do now is to deal with this diagram if you understand this diagram and absorb this diagram you will understand a lot of things the bridge of confusion that has been created by christianity islam and judaism will be easy to notice easy to identify as well as easy to cross therefore we have to deal with these uh, three aspects we have dealt with monotheism you can get our book uh on monotheism which deals with monotheism the creator or a god it clarifies and uh, simplifies this doctrine of the oneness of all but we want to deal with the connection of these three doctrines because these are the three doctrines or teachings that permeates every human mind that is living on the earth no matter who you are no matter who you are let's proceed and show uh, this in islam christianity or judaism there is no monotheism the monotheism that is there is a misunderstanding of very simple issues of metaphysics we are going to explain that ancient black african thinkers invented the concept of which and in which others derived the god ideas they carry today and the god by any other name all other races copied and modified this one original idea they also defined men our ancient ancestors they defined almost everything humans or abantus and the word bantu means a lot is loaded is packed a flesh blood and bones material conscious animal where inside this animal sleeps a divine shard a spark a spirit a tiny worm like piece of the almighty or created by the almighty and deposited into us via the law of reproduction by our ancestors so you see that these are all connected now the three are all connected the consciousness in you the divine soul and the divine body that you have and all your ancestry you have to decide to grow this spirit or to spark it out yet the animal being fights to dominate this divinity our wise ancient black african ancestors revealed the mysteries myths poetry and the songs to activate this spark and allow it to blossom into full divinity the plagiarists were not successful in copying all the details because the other details are abstract and oral they didn't copy that therefore the christian bible the quran and the torah and all other so-called holy books or holy writs miss these vital points on top of that the interpretations by all religionists all subsequent greek philosophers and modern genius have not been able to fully comprehend the enormity of these truths we shall share some of them here your soul spirit will tell you if this food is yours or not only after testing a little piece animism which is the basis and the foundation that can never be escaped by anybody who has ever been on the earth comes from the latin anima we call no it is an anunian ancestral reverence a system this is the religious belief that objects places and creatures all possess a distinct spiritual essence that is why they religions have holy places and even atheists have places they reverence potentially animism perceives all things animals plants rocks rivers weather systems human handwork and perhaps even words as animated and alive animism is the oldest known type of belief system in the world that even predates paganism anthropology defines this and is a noun it's defined as a stage 
of religious development in which material objects were believed to contain spiritual energy. Is this a lie or a truth? Quantum physics proved that this is very true. Animism, traditional African people developed this belief system that helped them understand and organize information about their world or the universe. It developed throughout many parts of the world in the course of history. There it is. There it is. You can see it quite clear how we love this doctrine, how we must understand this. Research in archaeology, history, linguistics, genetics, art, science, sociology, geography, psychology, philosophy, theology, biology, and zoology gives a timeline on the epistemological development of human understanding. You cannot deny this. We are going to show you the anthropological investigation and forensic study and the proof of the evolution of Bantu ideas. But here is the truth. Our current spiritual understanding is the basest of all. It is the monotheistic religions that have caused more suffering, destruction, and colonization and enslavement of others than our ancestors who were animists and polytheists. Our ancestors never compromised, never preached anything to anybody or converted anything or converted anyone to their beliefs. Imagine my totem and my rituals. How would someone with a different totem share in my rituals? We can only do it at a national level, which is different from a personal level or a personal God as preached by Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Here is the evolution of Bantu beliefs. Pre-animistic superstition, as they want to call it, these are anthropologists, at least one million years old. Think about that. Therefore, this destroys all the timelines of 7,000 years given by Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Pre-animism. At least about 300,000 years old. It was the, the, the animism, at least 100,000 years old. And the totemism, which we are teaching again for, we, and again for the last four years for people to adopt these totems so that they can be able to transcend and rise up to animism, to pre animism, and pre animism superstition, or use it to cross the bridge over to shamanism and the paganism and the progressed religion which is what was begun by pharaoh Ikhnaton. and look at the stage of uh, the world after these religions and uh, the religious world the hate the jealousy and the confusion the disaster it's a disaster really and then paganism started almost 12,000 years ago so, so it's young and the organized religion is about uh, 2,000 years ago so it's young or islam or judaism and christianity these are young they are johnny came late they came yesterday I wonder. All right. Animists were not stupid, but highly advanced. In so far as we know, even though they may have expressed the belief that everything, even natural phenomena, possessed an individual soul or spirit, they still had an overriding belief that these individual souls were distributed parts of a unity equivalent to the Judeo Christian concept of creator. Animists were essentially saying everything is part of nature. Now called God and the creation. And thus is imbued with a part of nature's spirit. These are our ancestors, African ancestors, black ancestors. Almost it's a million years ago. Animists, this is what scholars say. Animists tend to think in terms of a unitary soul being a part of the one soul of all creation or nature's spirit. Whereas Christian or Muslims fundamentalists insist that each soul is unique, separate and individual. See that? But if pressed even further, even fundamentalist Christians and Muslims who acknowledge that every soul ultimately emanated from or was loaned temporarily by God or Allah, a unity. That concept is no different really from the animist view that a soul is a distributed shard or part of nature. Now let's look at polytheism because we have to put polytheism in perspective. And because 
our ancestors were polytheists too and they were also animists and they were also monotheists there is no contradictions about these three it's only one doctrine but the practice are what differs the tools are what differs you select what tool you want to use this is all about tools spiritual as well as physical tools polytheism is the grouping or personifications of these energies animistic energies into specific deified force fields netas or gods gods of nature christianity judaism islam has taken these deities and they don't call them gods but they call them angels like gabriel who brought a message from one to the prophet there it is clear straightforward so there they are the gods and goddesses you go to this slide share you see that ancient civilization which is hermet when they spoke of the a as a force field in the ancient kemet they taught it as a shoe tefnat and god and then in mesopotamia they say enlil then you go to, uh, jupiter where you got jove or jehovah or spirit this is force field you got animals like bash hakute and manutu ishkure you got fire is sekhmet you got light is atora you got love is hathor where we get ishtar and cupid oh there it is marriage you got isis so these are all the force are fields or netas or gods that originate in the principles that we find in animism our ancient ancestors discovered all this or sleep we got to to enten or hypnosis you got stars nute shamash apollo you get also shamash in hebrewism you got magic is isisu ningirama and trivia you got underworld anubis these are force fields war is horesu water is sobek which is our totem ngwenya mlambo dziva siziva mazibugo that is got wisdom and intelligent you got a uh, thought and then you got the word amulet from mesopotamia is protection straightforward tebe that you carry so that's just straightforward <laughs> let's not <laughs> be confused about this the animists have a truer idea of what soul is and where it resides a better original explanation than that held by fundamentalist christians and muslims and other fundamentalists in other religions theirs is also a better idea better than even orthodox scientists atheists agnostics or anybody else so that is why we are saying islam is not a monotheistic a religion therefore there is only one imageless a religion and spirituality which one it is our ancestral religion ancestors let's look at what molef hent asant one of our current scholars are teaches ancestors are those who once lived human society in human society and having fulfilled certain conditions are now in the realm of the spirits one becomes an ancestor by living and dying in a particular way in african religion to become an ancestor one must have lived an exemplary life shown devotion to one's own ancestors respected the elders and had children among various ethnic groups to become an ancestor one must have died a good death that is one's death must not have been by suicide accident or other forms of violence with the possible exception of heroic deaths on the battle field in most societies those dying of epilepsy lepros and lunas cannot be considered candidates for ancestorhood or those who were thieves robbers killers dictators or evil can never be candidates of ancestorhood this is very important go and study it uh in from this uh, website now the almost universal adopted ideal that islam is a monotheistic religion was rejected by our ancestors long ago when one pharaoh wanted to abolish other two systems of animism and polytheism which our ancestors passed on to us he wanted to leave only the sun 
and our ancestors said no are you going to say no today or you are going to say yes Akhenaton, a heretic pharaoh he banned the worship of the existing pantheon of our gods netas powers forces shu tefnat uh, they wanted to replace them with only one single god the aten or sun disk imagine it didn't sit well with general population at large either because there was a consciousness and awareness of the effective power buried within animistic belief and practice as well as polytheistic practice the old satanities and tradition of centuries of worship of the old gods was swept aside overnight by Agnaton and this made most people feel confused and uneasy correct we have already explained that within a dozen years of his death the traditional worship of the old pattern of ancient Hamid was re-established Akhenaten being listed as an enemy of the state and enemy of the people in the archival records and being excised almost completely from ancient Hamitic history as a heretic he is a heretic you can get more information from that slide shown uh, there come out of it and let us rebuild our own which is real Ubuntu, Mahati, modern challenges, ancient solutions. Now is our ancestors' time. Thank you so much. Subscribe to our channel, Committee Brew Ethics. This is our email, join at marifado.com. Uh, this preacher, Rabbi A. Lem Dumizulu of Marifa Development Organization, Marifado. Till we meet again, a dupe siabonga tatenta. Thank you, Enkos.